All right, this is part three of the introduction to proofs. Um, there are two more valid uh, rules of inference that I have to talk about, and that's disjunctive syllogism and the constructive dilemma. So let's start with disjunctive syllogism. Uh, the argument form of a disjunctive syllogism looks like this. There is a disjunction, and then there's a negation of one of the disjuncts. It could be either the left or the right, it doesn't matter but in this case I'm negating the left disjunct. And then if we have those two things, if we have a, a disjunction and a negation of one of the disjuncts, then the rule tells us that we're allowed to infer uh, the other disjunct, right? So in this case, Q, the disjunct that we're not negating, uh, that's the one we infer. Here's an example. Um, here's my disjunction. In this case, my disjunction is of two negations. So um, either not A or not B. And here I have a double negation um, on the second line, not not A. right? But notice the not not A is simply a negation of this left disjunct not A. And so if I have those two lines, a neg uh, disjunction and a negation of one of the disjuncts, right, then I can infer the remaining uh, disjunct, in this case, not B. So what you need to see, again, is how this example is just an instance of this argument form, right? Because, again, the P's and the Q's can themselves be complex sentences, as they are over here, right? The P, for example, in this case, is a not A, and the Q is a not B, right? But you see, we've still got the form um, of this, and, and that's a really important thing that you'll need to be able to see in order to successfully do these proofs. Um, okay, let's discuss now the last uh, valid rule of inference, or valid argument form, and that's constructive dilemma. This is the only argument form we'll discuss that has kind of three premises and then uh, uh, concluding inference. So the form looks like this. You've got a disjunction and then you've got two conditional statements. The first conditional statement starts with the uh, one of the disjuncts in our original disjunction. Um, that's the, an the antecedent, right, is one of the disjuncts and then um, you have some uh, consequent here and then the second conditional you have the uh, antecedent um, of the other disjunct in this case Q and then some other sentence S and you need to look at this carefully because you have to know this form um, but if we have all of these three lines or sentences that have these form have uh, the form of these three lines here in our proof, then we're allowed to infer a statement either R or S, right? Um, let me talk through it in English. <clears throat> what we're asserting is that either P or Q is true. If P is true, then R is true. And if Q is true, then S is true. Therefore, either R or S is true. That's the f argument form that we call constructive dilemma. Um, here is a, a example of a constructive dilemma, again, where the P's, Q's, R's, and S's are themselves, or could be themselves, complex uh, sentences. Um, there's one other thing that I want to note about all of these uh, forms of inference that we've looked at, right? So modus ponens, Modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, simplification, conjunction, addition, disjunctive syllogism, and constructive dilemma. And what I want to note is that any of these argument forms we could prove is valid using a truth table, right? So, for example, I could put this argument in a truth table, right? It would be a four-row truth table. I'd have um, P and Q are my atomic components. I put the first premise as a column, the second premise as a column, and the conclusion as a column. And then I'd complete the truth table for this argument form, and what I'd find, of course, is that the truth table would prove that the form is valid, right? And I could do that same thing for any one of these uh, uh, forms that we've looked at. 